Hi right, YouTube, tonight we're going to talk about putting the booze in the bottles. Stick around. Alright guys, so when your fermentation is complete, whether it be your beer or your wine or your mead, you're going to want to take it out of this large, well, I call this large, uh, this is one gallon. Uh, it's larger than you want to drink in one sitting, that's for sure. All right, so you're going to take your, your product out of your larger vessel, and you want to put it in smaller vessels uh, so that you can enjoy it a little bit at a time and maybe set some of the stuff up to age, whatever. You're breaking it into smaller pieces. It really is what you're, what you're doing. All right, so if you've seen the racking video, the process that we're going to go through tonight is not much different than that. Uh, you're going to be using the same equipment uh, no matter where you are. Uh, even if you're still doing the, pardon me, if you're still doing the tube, you put the tube in the bottle and siphon it down into the smaller bottle uh, and you can, you know, let it fill up and kink it and move it over to the next stage. You know, that works. It's, it's messy. But it works. I, when I was doing that, I used to take the bottles as I was getting near the top and I would hold them next to each other so I could just move it right over to the next bottle. And that helped minimize my losses, but there were still losses and the bottles still uh, had spillage on them. So that is a doable, doable uh, method. However, there are better methods. Um, you know, if you wanted to go take a, a a cue from the beer makers they have these buckets with the with the spigots on the bottom that this hose would fit it fits right up on there and you can control it with the valve turn it on and off fill up your bottles you can do it that way uh, you know for smaller batch you know they, this is great for five gallons uh, but you know you try and put one gallon in there just not as efficient for that you could probably swing by Walmart pick up one of those lemonade pitchers that's got the spigot in the bottom uh, that could probably work for small batch mead. Um, but I'm going to show you what I've evolved to, and I'm never going back to any other method. Okay, so we're going to start just like we had in the racking uh, video. We're going to start with our auto siphon. Uh, this goes in there, and you pump it. It's attached to your hose. And that starts a siphon for you. We're gonna have the bottle up high, the source bottle up high, and the smaller bottles down low. Uh, you know, so the siphon works. Gravity does what it does. So you got your hose, and then what we're gonna have on the end. This is gonna be new. Is the bottling wand. You can pick these up for like seven bucks on Amazon by themselves, uh, which is fairly, fairly inexpensive, especially considering how much this makes your life easier. You know, I'll put a link to that below, but uh, I think that if you have not picked up an auto siphon yet, this would be a good time to pick up. I found a, a, a bundle that comes with an auto siphon, large auto siphon like this, a length of tubing and the bottling wand for like, I think it was 17 bucks. And I'll put that in the, uh, in the description down below. Um, so how does bottling wand works? It's uh, this end connects to your tubing. And then on this end, there is a spring-loaded valve. And when you push this against a surface, it opens that valve and the fluid will flow out. And then when you pull it away, it closes, the spring closes the valve so no fluid is coming out. So the idea is you put it down and you, and you push it on the bottom of your bottle. And that lets the fluid out at the bottom of the bottle so you're not sloshing, you're not uh, taking on any more oxygen than you have to and it'll slowly fill up. And the, the great part about this is you fill it all the way to the top and then when you pull this thing out, your uh, level will drop down to where it's supposed to be, almost like automatically, like clockwork. And then uh, let's talk about the bottles. Now these, these um, are bottles I use for mead. Um, I bought these off of Amazon and they come in a case of 12 with these screw on caps. They're like 25 bucks uh, for 12 bottles. Uh, I think that's pretty good, but I'll go ahead and put a link in the description. But you're going to be much better off if you have a uh, homebrew store nearby. 
Um, closest one to me is like three hours away. So when I happen to be in town, I'll swing by there. And that's when I pick up my glassware. In the beginning, I was ordering it online and it actually costs more, you know, with the shipping and everything else. And then on top of that, you get the occasional losses. Like you open up the box and then, you know, a bottle or two is broken. Um, yeah, so just avoid all that, honestly, if, if you can. And go down to your local homebrew shop, buy your glassware there. All right, so in order to demonstrate the process, I'm gonna take this, uh, this one gallon batch of wild berry mead that I made for the wife. Uh, started out as a traditional in primary, and then in secondary, I racked it onto um, some frozen berries, you know, of different uh, variety, and she loves it. So what, we're gonna go ahead and put it in these bottles. I've developed the habit of putting a towel down so that if there is any spillage, you're not uh, staining your furniture or your flooring or your countertop. It's just better that way. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna get all these bottles lined up with the caps off because as you move from bottle to bottle, you gotta be quick. Just like in the racking video, your tube fits onto the end of the racking cane, like so. And then the other end we're gonna put on our bottling wand, like so. Now, if the end is too snug and you're having a hard time getting it on the tubing, on the hard tubing, remember you can just heat it up in some uh, just run hot water over the end and that'll that'll soften it up enough that it'll expand and do what you need to do. Okay, so starting with the bottle wand and the auto siphon can be a little tricky. What you have to remember is that the fluid will not go through the tube unless you're putting pressure on the bottom of the bottle. So we gotta push down here and then with our other hand, pump. what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start on this end. Now you can see I've already got my my siphon started. Yeah, look how pretty that is. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a cap ready. I want to cap this just as soon as I can so I don't spill it. And all I'm doing is I'm pushing, pushing this thing down into the bottom of the bottle. It's all the work I'm doing. Now as this thing gets near the top, you just gotta watch real close. You know, I can pull it up and I can just tap it a couple times and that puts it up where I want it. Now when I pull that out, look at that. It goes right down where it needs to be. Uh, move over to that bottle. Keep going. I like cap this one. So that's all the racking can is going to give me. Go ahead and get the what's left in the tube here. Head it down there.
I'm pushing against the side of the bottle there. That's letting it drain down. All right, guys, that's bottling in a nutshell. Uh, as you can see, it's it's nothing overly complicated. Um, the good news is you take this one gallon bottle and you turn it into f oh, nearly five, nearly five 750 milliliter bottles that are uh, a lot handier to drink out of than the big jug. Um, one, th one important note that I want to touch on is, you can see I've got this number here, this one's 24 Bravo. I'm going to go through with some painter's tape and a marker and I'm going to mark each of these bottles the same way. That way when I'm in that, my little stash and I'm digging around, I can pull this, look at the number, compare it to my notes and I know what bottle I've got in my hand. And vice versa, if I want to go specifically for this wild berry mead, I'll uh, I'll look it up and see which one it is, and then I know which number of bottles I need to find. Now, for the most part, you're going to get at least four bottles out of each gallon, and then you usually get a partial. Every now and again, I'll have a good run or you know a really full run, and I'll, I will get that act, that fifth bottle. Um, the exception being uh, runs like this. Uh, I had a lot of losses on this one, so I'm down quite a bit. Um, I might get three in a partial out of this one, but this one's the exception of the rule. You know, this one over here, it's gonna be the same deal. You can see I've got all those losses there with this, this layer of pulp I got on the bottom. Uh, I might get three, maybe two and a half bottles out of that one. But for the most part, one gallon is gonna give you four of these bottles. That way, if uh, you've got a target amount that you're aiming for, you got a good idea of uh, how much your primary batch should be. Other than keeping your equipment clean and sanitized before you put it into contact with your mead, uh, I can't really think of anything else important. Uh, if I do, if I remember it down the road, I'm gonna go ahead, I'll put it down in the description. So check that out, uh, see if I've updated that. And then also, if you've got any experience doing this kind of stuff and, and you've got some suggestions, go ahead and put those in the comment box. That way uh, everybody gets to learn from this and everybody gets a tool in their toolbox and uh, we're not running around with a bunch of bad information. With all of that said, I'd like to thank you folks for taking the time to stop in and watch this video. And if you found it entertaining or helpful anyway, give me a thumbs up, man. Let me know I'm doing all right. If I'm not, throw a comment down there on the bottom. Let me know how I can fix things. Uh, if you'd like to see more mead making videos or actually any of the other stuff that I'm gonna be doing, hit that subscribe button so you'll know when the new videos come out. Thanks for stopping in.